Um, and the last poem that I'm going to read was my, um, my piece in Sociopoetic. And being who I am, I, I kind of, um, I couldn't not write a poem that was in some way a critique of sociology as a discipline. And, and, <laughs> and then I didn't anticipate that I would be reading it to a room of sociologists. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have, I apologise in advance. <laughs> it's obviously just the way I roll. <laughs> it's, it's, um, this is called How Sociology Broke My Heart. Sociology has broken my heart many times. I'm channeling Dolly Parton to say this. That's a distraction. Conjuring fi fiddles, blonde electric curls woven out of synthetic thread, and other jaded objects that bring country music to mind. Fake boobs, maybe, or the religious right, Alabama or Desert Road. You might say Dolly is a grossly ren rendered icon of the cult of the visual or the aesthetic commodification of women. Shit. I'd forgive you. The emphasis for me is the narrative of how she went from trash poor and made it. Made it as the American dream, the real true story of a woman who overcame poverty to wear greenback shoes, diamonds, silicons, and look like trash. Yeah. <laughs> Class, it doesn't leave you alone. Rich trash is still trash, even if you're direct dialing Steve Jobs with your upward mobility. And us underclass girls, we always get it wrong. Work how pretty, while pretty has something to give. Make it work hard with lipstick and mascara, plastic kitten heels from the warehouse. Bourgeois women can afford some disdain. Poor clings to me. It has bad armpit smell. So, how sociology broke my heart. Oh, unlike the other social grads, I didn't come to university to learn about class. I came to university to get as far away from broke as I could find. All the dumb smart sociology guys keep shitting on about revolution and class action and the criminal class and I can talk class politics but I'm hanging out for some upwards mobility, upwards mobility, upwards mobility. It's not a lack of class consciousness, it's underclass subjectivity. And you can talk sweet revolution all you like, but I know you're going to print your revolution in a journal, revolutionise your CV and work it to get a tenure job at a university. And, and I know, objectively, that's not a lot of money. It is to me. Yeah. I know you wanted to tell me that we can be on the same side. You, for instance, could hold my hair back while I cried, curled like a cat on your bed. You can lend me your copy of, of Zizek or Wojcik with the pencil underlines and sticky tags. And then I would understand you could present at Sands angry and dynamic, and I be your paler silver star. We wouldn't get married, we'd just cohabitate, invite the other grads around. You'd talk Marxism on the porch with the guys. I'd wash the dishes and bring you more beer. You'd get a lecturing job and I'd have an abortion. Or else grow a smart baby and take it in protest in a plastic and take it to protest in a plastic warehouse stroller. It's not what I want. No. No, I said, drop it, would you? Or else, another version. You think after some beer that you'll have me convinced to change my thesis topic, to sell gender up the river for commodity fetishism. It's loud, you keep getting louder. You keep saying, you're smart. If you think harder, you should get this. And part of me is flattered. I mean nauseous. <laughs> My heart. Sociology was the first time the parameters of my life were laid bare. I turned my hands in my lap and saw the lines traced by gender, class and race that while I had waited for the box of food delivered from City Mission, other kids got presents from capitalism. And the names I had been called, like dark ink tattooed into skin, were hung out 
felt like lanterns strung by gender suddenly illuminated. Trash. Coming from nothing has given me an uncanny sense of when someone is bullshitting. When you first... When you first read Marx, it's like first love. You confuse consciousness with freedom. Mm. Sociology guys who skip gender lectures to drink espresso and talk Marxism in the quad grow up to be sociology men. <laughs> Heartless. You say I'm wasting my time with gender when it's all about revolution. You say gender is just a distraction. Women own 1% of the world's wealth. Marx's point was that we act in our own self-interest. Money and power, baby, all the way.